I okay, finished go. War of Two Queens. I'm excited. Why am I now? <laughs> because she gets to see us. And then let's see. Nope, not questions. I did it. I covered that and I'm honestly like as good as this book maybe I think I'm just gonna oh, there she is. <laughs> see I'm not sure oh hey. hi let's see how, hi. how I can make this maybe I should have grabbed my headphones <laughs> I, I don't know with their airpods that would have helped two out of three people <laughs> don't you have airpods <laughs> oh they do um yeah they, they do join connect, connect yeah they do connect one set. I don't. I have no clue how to do that, but yes, I do have earpods. <laughs> how are you? Hi. Ah. Hi. Are you guys doing okay? Yeah. Hoping that it doesn't rain because we couldn't do this inside because it's way too loud. Oh no! It does look like it's going to pour any second. So. <laughs> We're in Florida, so. Yeah. It's it's. Uh, when I visited Florida, it rained off and on like it does in Ireland. So. <laughs> Except it's way hotter there. So, look at that. Look at all of us. Yay! <laughs> there you go. <laughs> face off. It's not half her face off. Kind of half fine. Face off. I'm you like fine. Too. Well, it's a good thing I'm so cute. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm so true. talking to you on social media today, and I. Jessica. Yeah. I, yeah. And I, I just completely squealed at work because I don't. I don't think it's ever gonna get. It's never gonna get boring with, with when authors like talk to me and follow me, and it makes me so excited. <laughs> I just I got on Twitter. I don't usually get on Twitter, and I saw your post, and I was like, "Ooh, I wonder if I can crash that." <laughs> yeah, please, so. please come crash our, our our book club. I love it. <laughs> I got this as an ARC, like right before. Or no, it was already out by that that point. And I went from the EARC that I'd gotten from Idlewise, left work, got done there, went to Books A Million, grabbed a copy, and finished it in, like, a day. <laughs> That's amazing. You, I mean, I will say, I do warn people, like, if you start it, you probably won't be able to put it down. If you like it. I mean, if you hate it, obviously. <laughs> no, but, but uh, you know, if it, if it grabs your attention from the first chapter, I think it's, it's going to be really hard to put down, so... <laughs> ever like <laughs> any of them <laughs> i i missed half of what you said i'm so sorry anybody could dnf any of your books <laughs> oh well they do but you know i love you for saying that <laughs> well they're so different though because like you know like this one is just full on fantasy and then a touch of darkness is you know like like you know kind of set in our That's world but read. with the greek the greek oh you read some yeah. darkness oh, okay i've read the series and then you just had a, a book release just the other day, right? Yeah, just last week, uh, A Game of Retribution, which is, uh, it's, we say it's ruin told from Hades point of view, but the plot is just, is completely different. It's just a, you know, basically it's like what Hades was doing when he wasn't present in ruin, which was a lot of the book. So <laughs> if you haven't had a chance to read his side, you should, you should do that because I think it adds... It just adds dimension to the whole world, so. So what do you think was, like, the most difficult part about writing that book for you? Uh, writing KBB or writing Retribution? Retribution. Oh, I just Hades being a difficult bitch. <laughs> I know. What are they doing in this building? I it's thought it's a train. Oh, a train it's is coming the, it's by. Train. We have Amtrak coming by. <laughs> I can't hear it. I cannot hear it, so. <laughs> So loud. So guys, um, guys watching, I just want to make sure I'm gonna like scoop this up a little bit here, guys. If you're watching, just so you know, if you haven't read this and you don't want spoiled, do not listen to this. <laughs> Come yeah. back after yeah. you read it. Read it first. <laughs> yeah. Although yeah. I will say, someone did ask if there's a sequel to KVB, and there is. It's Queen of Myth and Monsters. The cover's already been revealed, and it's already up for pre-order. So. You know. Yeah, I I saw I saw book two of this, and I'm like I'm still hoping that it drops on like Idlewise or something because I don't want to wait till December. <laughs> well, you know I don't. Uh, so I uh, it's not written yet, so, and it, the due date's not until September first. So uh, art copies probably won't go out until October, likely. So it, it will still be a while before. Um, That's like 
not super close. Oh, there, now the train. Oh, it always is. I, you know, I do, I am traditionally published now, but I still work off my own schedule. That was the agreement I made. Um, so yeah, so I usually finish a book within three months of its publication date. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, so I get to keep, I get to maintain, but you know, if I didn't do that, you'd, you would be waiting, you know, one to two years for that book. So <laughs> like most of the time typically like it takes so long to get it through like an editor and then yeah, like, everything like that writes all that lovely stuff. yeah yeah I write really cleanly and I kind of um my editor and I kind of do this thing where as I finish chunks of the book she will edit so when I go back to um edit completely we have a pretty clean draft already and so we just do that you know that second run through and then it goes to coffee edits uh, so we kind of have a pretty good system in place for how to get books out quickly. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. I know. <laughs> it's painful waiting. It's right. so I know. I know. <laughs> and I hate when it's like, you're in a series, like, and the last book is not published yet, but that's when you start the series, and then you run through the whole thing, and you hit this giant brick wall. We won't talk about that. <laughs> yeah. That's everyone now. That's everyone right now, like, with... <laughs> Uh, with my series so <laughs> but you know writes books who are some of your favorite authors to read from um I really you know I love um Highlander and fantasy uh, and Regency romance uh so I read a lot of Tessa Dare and Sarah McLean and Monica McCartney um and I love Lee Bardugo I don't read a lot of YA anymore but she's one of my top like fantasy authors awesome yeah. I, I do love a good Sarah J. Maas series. Yeah, she's, I, um, I am going, I'm one of those people, um, I haven't read it, uh, complete, I haven't completed either of her series or either, like, any of them, I guess, um, I, one day, but not while I'm writing, <laughs> like, I have to write. I, I just, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I, it's a commitment, you know. <laughs> How did you come up with this one? With King of Battle and Blood? Um, I, I basically Adrian and Azul just started talking in my head one day and you know the conversation they're having about um when he asks for her hand in marriage and she says like why do you need a wife you don't need heirs and he says would you rather be a breeding mare that was the first conversation they had and I was like okay so here we are <laughs> and then it's just kind of a, a question game from there like why can't you have children? And, <laughs> and I realized that he was a vampire and I had wanted, I had, you know, um, I have a YA book called When Stars Come Out that's being relaunched in July. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you say you, you have it? Or? Yeah, 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 I just got that the other day. Yeah, so it's, um, so it's YA, but it used to actually be a vampire novel and I changed it because, um, you know, I started writing in high school. So I've always held on to vampires. Um, but I thought when I heard them, I was like, this is perfect because this is, this can be exactly what it needs to be as a, like a vampire novel, which is like horror-esque and sexy and romantic. Um, and so I started doing research on just vampiric mythology. And what was very interesting to me was the idea that vamp vampirism is different ac across cultures. We all have our own versions of, of what a vampire is. And it's based on our, our fears. And uh, so I took that idea and sort of um, folded that into the world along with witch hunts because I really felt like this world was dominated by women. Um, but of course, in our society as well, uh, women are always taken advantage of and oppressed. And uh, it's kind of the story, hopefully, of uh, women obtaining that power again and sort of crushing the patriarchy. <laughs> uh, so in, in QMM, I've done a lot of research on how the patriarchy was formed, actually. Um, and it's very disheartening, uh, very depressing. <laughs> 10 out of 10, you know, only recommend if you're ready to start a revolution and maybe we should all be reading it. But uh, so, yeah, it's, um, it's, yeah, it was, a, it, there's a lot that went into it, but it was also like, uh, you know, when I wrote my Greek series, I was adapting from mythology. And this was the first sort of world, fantasy world and mythology I had started to create in a long time. And I had so much fun just, you know, building it from the ground up. Awesome. 
So how long did it take start to finish? Uh, well, KBB probably took about two months to write uh, when I actually started doing it seriously. <laughs> Oh, too much. Well, I had, I had, let's just, let's say once again, I had no choice in the matter really, because I, it was the first book that was picked up by uh, my publisher, Bloom. And by the time they did, I, I literally had two months until deadline. So I had no choice but to actually like, you know, batten down the hatches and actually get it written. So like bits and pieces of this, one of the other series that we just finished was from the Blood and Ash. And like, Uh I've already read this in the past, but like, Parts of it reminded me of that series, but, like, where Poppy is, like, a scared little girl, you know, is old is, I mean, she's, the, like, a take names and ask questions later. And I just, I <laughs> so much that, why did you decide to make her basically her, the heroine of her own story? Uh, as, as old as someone that I aspire to be, I think. And from the very beginning, she was someone who knew the world that she was born into. And, uh, I mean... I don't know. I always feel like my characters sort of, sort of just tell me who they are and I go with it. And she was someone who knew the world she was born into. She knew there was no room for fear. You know, there was no room to uh, let people take advantage of you. And she also knew that she was born into royalty and what that meant for her future. Um, the pro with the Zold, her biggest issue is that she had this idea in her head that she was going to be queen, the first queen of the nine houses. And Adrian comes along and steals that from her. And so she has to quickly understand what her new identity is. And, I, and, and she feels often throughout the book that she's betraying herself and her people. Um, and I think we all know how that actually turned out. But, uh, well, we, us here. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I just, I just really wanted to write someone that I aspired to be. And that's, that's who as old is. Yeah, I wish I could stab Love. people with knives, I guess. <laughs> Do you have a question? I was kind of wondering, like, so she did a bunch of research about the different mythologies. Was there one that you, like, read and you decided you weren't going to use, but you thought was really interesting? Um, well, there are actually, a, it was so much. It was, it's just, uh, the book that I read is called The Encyclopedia of Empiric Mythology. It had a really good, a really interesting introduction. And then it lists by definition, all of these vampires from different cultures. It just depended on what monster I was trying to um, incorporate into the world and its role. So I don't really remember if anything specific, uh, but I think if, if I excluded anyone, it was because it didn't fit the environment in that moment. Um, but I'm revisiting it again because as we go through QMM, we will have, you know, new monsters, new things, new fears. Uh, but the witchcraft is actually at the... Ooh. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's like all the noise is coming by now. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> stop talking or it's going to start raining. Oh, right. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> Don't jinx us. Um, the witchcraft is actually the bigger element that's coming through this time, and I'm really excited about that. Ooh. So, you know, yeah. So it's it's, right. it's been fun. Like love all the sirens. <laughs> I know. <laughs> People ask okay. some We're making it up work. here in the chat. Here, let me scroll back through this. Oh, are they stop? I was like, are they stopping yeah, here? Is at your at the park or I don't know where you're at but <laughs> now that is loud. <laughs> um how many books are one light this way. Yeah. The right how many books are gonna be in uh Adrian and Isolde's uh story? Uh right right now I think that three will be will complete three. the series. Yeah, yeah. So is the next one going to be, the third one going to be out, like, sometime next year? Or? You know, I don't know how that will shake out. Um, <laughs> I um, it's a, I think it depends on how quickly I can write Chaos, which is the final um, primary Hades and Persephone book. Um, okay. So, final. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Aside from, like, A Game of Gods, which is Malice, from Hades point of view but not really because a game of gods will have Theseus Hades and Dionysus's point of view because there's no way to like rewrite if I rewrite Malice from Hades point of view literally 70k of that book is Hades 
And I don't rewrite books. Like, so I, so it's going to have a different plot. So it, it won't even so look like books. Malice. Like, oh, this is the final book. And then I've heard other things that they're like, no, she's just going to keep going. And I'm like, ah. I, I think what they mean by that is there'll be the spinoffs, which is like Aphrodite and Hephaestus, like a Tempest of Fire and Fury. That's like, that's the next book, but it's not in the Hades and Persephone series. It's just a spinoff with, to, right. to focus on their story. So that might be what they're meaning. I was like, I don't know. Cause I am, I'm somebody who I like the series to be finished. And yeah. I, and I read the <laughs> I know. of those books and I was like, I can't, I can't keep doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So I, uh, I want that for people too. And so but part of my insane brain is I kind of want to write a game of gods and chaos back to back, but I don't know if I have the mental capacity to actually do that. <laughs> Here comes another train. Put the, put the oh. <laughs> All right, at least their sirens aren't on. Right. Yeah. I love right. how you're like all over here about, about this story, this story, and I'm all about this story, this story. I know. And we're like, I'm going to be completely honest. I, I was a bad book club member and I finished the book before today. Oh, no. Now you have to. You have no choice. Did you make it to chapter six? I, no, I'm on uh, middle of chapter three. I See, if she had been in horrible. chapter six, she wouldn't have been, she would have, she wouldn't have put it down. You got to make it through chapter six. Listen, listen, I know I'm a bad book club member. It's so worth girl, it, though. It's so good. Work and school take a lot of my time. Yeah, I, I, uh, the only thing I actually have real time to do is write. And uh, I always get asked at events if I read all these books. And I'm like, actually, no. <laughs> Mostly, I spend all my time writing. And in the time that I'm not writing, I have to do all my adulting stuff. And then you know, so it's a, it's a really harsh schedule, I think. Um, but one day I'll get to rest. <laughs> get, feel like confused because you're like writing like three different stories all at once or so. Do you, do you ever get confused? No, I just always hope that I can maintain the voices. I, I think that's my biggest fear, especially since I do write from Hades' point of view and then Adrian's point of view. The difference is is that uh, Hades is third person and Adrian's first person, so it's a little easier. They both uh, speak in different sentence structures, too, but kind of trying to immerse yourself into that is a little difficult. That's kind of my only fear. So, did, did King and Battle and Blood get published as an indie book, or was it only always through Blue and Blood? Yeah, it was, um, at first when I announced it, I was still self-published, but uh, after, uh, I, I, sh I got picked up shortly after that, and so they, that, they decided that was going to be the first book that they published. Now, they did take on my backlist, too, but it was, like, the first launch with Bloom, so. Did anything change from what you had already done? Uh, no. No, no, my editor and I are like really in tune. Like we work at, we work very well together. And even then, I, I think we kind of understand that we have, a, I have a fandom here. So I can get away with like putting anything I want really. And especially my Hades and Persephone series. Cause I'm like, it's for the fandom and we all know it. <laughs> I always get scared because in the past when like uh, a indie author got picked up as her tr as a traditional author and then you know stuff gets changed and I'm like wait well no this person was dead in the indie book are they still alive <laughs> no no I have a lot so I have a very unique situation with my publisher and I have a lot of say in in the things that go into my book even my covers so um so it's it's definitely like more like a 50 50 partnership and they very much listen to what i have to say so it's, it's pretty cool so when you're when you have a first book of a series published like when your very first hades and persephone's book came out how much of that feedback from your fandom did you take in writing the second and third and so on i don't really um so i don't so i think that what, what i do is I watch for what they love uh, and that's it. So like they let, so they love baking scenes and they love Hermes being funny and they love bonus content that's like mundane with like Hades doing mundane things. So I try to give them that, but overall, um, you know, pieces of them being like, oh my gosh, I, I love this so much. And like, mm -hmm. at what point do you decide to keep that or ditch that, you know? I, I pretty much get to keep 
I pretty much keep everything that I write. Um, because I think that I just know what the story is going to be very clearly. And then um, a lot of stuff ends up as bonus, some stuff ends up as bonus content, but it's because it's like a fun scene that doesn't fit into the actual narrative. And it's just something I know my readers will enjoy. Um, but then I have to decide if it's canon or not. And that's kind of difficult. Like I did a bonus uh, scene for uh, the pre-order A Game of Retribution. And I was like, is this canon? I couldn't figure out like, <laughs> it was so difficult to write it. Cause I was like, does this fit between Ruin and Malice? And is it canon? And am I gonna have to do a lot of explaining later? It was just, you know, so I do think about those things, but um, in A Game of Fate, I have a whole chapter called uh, for your pleasure, a montage, and it's just a sex montage, and it was just a, it was like a play on, um, you know, like sex montages in movies, and I thought it was hilarious, so, <laughs> so yeah, I do stuff like that, though. <laughs> awesome. Actually, that's really funny. <laughs> I know, and I'm like, who realizes this? Like, does anyone realize what I did here? Like, how clever I am? <laughs> So do you have a favorite book of all time? Like what? Is well, favorite I, yeah, house? I, I always say the Lord of the Rings because it's what got me into writing. It's the whole reason I started writing fantasy. I'd always been a reader, but I read mysteries and, you know, and I guess I just never realized that you could create a whole world until I read the Lord of the Rings. And I was like, wait a minute, I can create a Middle Earth as my own, like, you know, and then I never looked back. I started reading that at 13. And I decided I wanted to be a famous author and, woo, you know, never looked back. So <laughs> congratulations, you did right? it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> like, Look at that. You're actually doing your 13-year-old self. <laughs> I know. I know. Every time something happens that was like in my, I don't know, just sort of in my, um, dream like I'm like oh my god like I, I went to France for the release of A Touch of Darkness and you know hit hit number 10 on the bestseller list there and then my book uh was published in Germany a couple of weeks ago and it hit number six on the bestseller list there and I was like oh, whose oh. life am I living <laughs> the second one you you come on a book tour and then Central Florida is yeah the there show. you go yeah come come I uh, last summer I visited, I was, well, I was in Miami and I, uh, and I went to some Barnes and Nobles, uh, around that area. And, uh, but Miami. yeah, we'll, we'll carpool. We'll, we'll drive to Miami. <laughs> You're like, I'll come there. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, if I, the thing you couldn't, you can always do is, uh, talk to your bookstores and they can reach out to my publisher themselves and express interest in being a part of the next tour. And that's sort of how, um, how you get me in your location because we have to have de demand. Someone said Texas, okay. and I was just We're in Texas. <laughs> like, I work at the bookstore. <laughs> yeah, 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 there you go. Uh, yeah, so just do uh, do that. <laughs> well, just everything will get fit, you know. I'll say it out flyers, you know, it'll all get set up. My boss will be like, what is going on? I'm like, oh, we're having an author signing. When did I sign up for this? <laughs> they don't I, need to know. <laughs> no. <laughs> you're, you're right. It's magic. Anyway. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's magic. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So if you if you do that, then um, yeah, thousand. that would be great. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you want to do it soon for QMM, because I think we're already kind of looking at where we're going for QMM, so... Oh, I had a question. So, is it weird to, like, get your book translated into, like, different languages, especially ones you don't personally read? Uh, it's, it's not, it's not weird. It's really cool. But the weird part is, like, the, um, the readers who read in that language have a lot of questions that I can't answer. Like, the, um... <laughs> <laughs> the Spanish version translates to a caress of darkness and they always ask me why that was the choice and I'm like I don't know like I don't know <laughs> Spanish I don't know why it oh, chose no. that um and then German readers were so upset because my publisher chose to do uh lilies and